think, I don't think people expect like, no, not yet. Okay, I see it. Taking this opportunity to download the YouTube app and see if I can. Just you know. Just for your way, whatever we're saying. Yeah, this is uh, this is open in the app. Oh, this is good. Can you test Kira and tell her that she can't touch me on the phone so it's not going to see it? Like I'm using the phone. She can text you for sure. Yeah, tell her that if there's anything. I just saw she can see it. So she could. It's fine if she does it. That's better. There you go. Yeah, anyway. Okay. Thank you. 
wonder if they're signing a comb or whatever.
Thanks for being so cool. interwebs hey wow it's a new thing we're trying a new thing here this is exciting we're on the YouTube I hope it's working misinformation is right over there hi my name is George Rob welcome to episode one of 13 songs with me oh my gosh so the topic the subject this day today for this episode for this first one number one right now here is semi-obscure 80s and I was racking my brain not so much what songs to choose? That wasn't the important issue. The important issue was what was I going to wear? What was I going to wear for episode one, semi-obscure 80s? You can see I have my thin tie. There's no piano keys on this because even in the 80s, I didn't wear a piano key tie. But what I did wear is this actual blazer, which I still have. This is my Claiborne 80s blazer. Look at this thing. Look at this thing. Look at the shoulders on this thing. Look at the shoulders. Look at how my head is like actually in proportion with the shoulders for once. That never happens. That never, look at that. Look at this thing. This, my sister's friend, Rebecca Link, got this for me because she was at a sample sale. And this was used in a photo shoot or something. So look at this, look at this puppy, huh? Fabulous. What's up, is this sound working? So Ms. Info is right off camera, six feet away, making sure the feed is working. Are we okay? What do we got here? There's a huge delay. There's a huge delay from what I'm saying and what they're hearing? Is that the thing? No, there's a huge delay between uh, what they're seeing and what you're doing. Okay. Like you're doing that, they don't see it for another few but seconds. But that's fine, because, yeah, that's fine. Okay. That's fine. Yeah, cool. Uh, so anyway, welcome to episode one. This is how it's going to work. I've got 13 songs uh, on a topic, semi-obscure 80s. Uh, we're hoping this is all going to work out fine. We've never done a YouTube thing before, so thank you for tuning in. Are you doing okay? Are you good? Are you happy? Are you safe? Do you have paper? I hope so. Okay. First off, cheers for tuning in, and let's begin. This is my James Bond villain glass, by the way, in case you're wondering. This is my favorite. So, okay. The first tune. Now, I was gonna do. I was gonna do a song by Elvis Costello, and I was so excited to start the show with a song by Elvis Costello, one of my absolute favorites, and I worked on it and I had it in the queue, and then I realized it was from 1991. <gasps> Way to go, dude. So I had to pick another Elvis Costello song, and so I chose this one. I'm gonna play it, and I'll talk about it maybe a little bit. This is a song that's uh, co-written by, of all people, Paul McCartney. Can you guess what it is? That's right, not that obscure, but semi-obscure. Here we go. <laughs> Gone to hide all the 
shout her name and steal her clothes. Veronica. 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 Veronica sits in a failed chair. She sits very quiet and still. And they call her a name that they never get right And if they want, then nobody else will She used to have a carefree mind her own A devilish look in her eyes Saying you can call me anything you like But my name is Veronica Do you suppose that when Album, uh, that's on the album uh, Spike from 1989. 1989, the album Spike, and and uh, Elvis Costello was working with Paul McCartney at the time. He wrote a bunch of songs with Paul McCartney on Paul McCartney's album Flowers in the Dirt, and that had that awesome song My Brave Face, which is a killer tune. And you can sort of hear uh, Elvis's influence in that song, as I think you can kind of hear Paul's influence in this. And, coincidentally, even though we're doing the semi-obscure uh, 80s stuff, this is Elvis Costello's uh, highest charting single. It was like number 11. Highest charting single was just, of all the songs that Elvis has in his repertoire, this one was actually the highest charting. Might have been because there was a video to accompany and things were sort of timed perfectly. But um, what was great in the, in the Flowers in the Dirt album, uh, which was Paul McCartney's record, uh, there were these awesome drawings included that like sort of drew the sonic landscape of every song, like where the instruments were in the mix. And it was something that I think Paul drew. I think Paul drew that. I'm not sure exactly. But uh, as you would page through, you'd have these like crayon drawings of what the mix like looked like, like where the drums were and how things were related. It was super cool. It was super cool. All right, that's song number one. We got our handy dandy. Oh, we're going to go this way our handy dandy little scoreboard here, so you can know where we are, so you know how many are left. Cheers. I hope it's sounding okay. I hope everything's in frame and in focus. Seems like people are happy, so yay. This next tune is uh, done by someone whose brother is much more famous than he is. This is a song by an artist named Michael Penn, and this is from, what's the year? Oh, this is also from 1989, and this is called No Myth. Sometime from now you'll bow to pride. 
pressure Some things in life you cannot measure by degrees Between the poles and the equator Don't send a private investigator to find it, please Lest he speaks Chinese And can dance like a stare overseas Okay What if I was Michael Penn. Now his famous brother is Sean Penn. Now Michael Penn, you might know him best, not just from that song. That was his only hit that he had, the record that he had after that. Uh, the name of that album, that was called March. It was called March. I can't name another Michael Penn song, which is a shame because he's apparently a great songwriter. He's done a lot of movie soundtracks and stuff like that. But um, he played in the movie Boogie Nights. When, when Dirk Diggler goes to record his rock album, he's the sound engineer. He's the sound engineer that Dirk Diggler is trying to convince he's got to have the demo. He's got to have, he says, is the bass too loud? And he's like, no, the bass seems fine. Oh, turn the bass down, turn the bass down. So, feel, 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 feel my heat. Love that movie. Love that movie. He's, he's in some other film too as well, but that's his big, his big, oh my God, that's such a great film. Such a great film. Okay, moving on, we're going to zip forward to 1983, and this is a band that's not obscure by any stretch. Oh, song number three. Um, yeah, oh, Miss Info. Evo says, raise your hand if you're pissed that Geo can still fit into a 30-year-old blazer. <laughs> I don't know if you heard that. Yes, Evo, I still fit. Not only just fit into it, but... Uh, well, that was the cut at the time, so they, they were generously cut, I have to say. But I can, can button it, so, yeah. yeah. The, the sadder part is that I saved it. I think <laughs> that's the sadder part, is that this was in... And I knew exactly where it was in my closet. So, uh, Ms. Info wore this for Halloween a couple of years ago for an 80s party. Halloween party or something like that? Yeah. Uh, Ms. Info is also decked out in her 80s finery, which we will show you later. Stick around for that, if nothing else. Songs, schmongs, whatever. <laughs> you got to see the finery happening over there, Ms. Info. Um, <clears throat> song number three. We're going to zip forward to a band, a little, a little trio. A trio band that was half American, well, a third American and two-thirds English. Uh, they were named after uh, one of the law enforcement agencies. They were called the Police. And this is from the record Synchronicity which is a monstrously huge record. But there's a couple songs on there, uh, the majority of which are written by Sting. There's two songs on there, I believe just two, that are not written by Sting. One is Mother by Andy Summers, which is uh, when I was young and that song would come on, listening to it in 1983, I hated it. I didn't understand it. It's in seven. The telephone is ringing. Is that my mother on the phone? The telephone is... It was like the weirdest thing. So when I was 13, I hated that song. By the time I was like 17, that was the coolest song on the album because like every breath you take was so overplayed. And then by the time I was uh, 48, I, I loved them both equally. So it all works out in the wash. But there is a song on there. The second song on the album, not written by Sting, is written by Stuart Copeland, one of my absolute favorite drummers, musicians, characters, geniuses of all time, let alone drum set players, but just influential on me and, uh, and the world with his little hi-hat flourishes. On my Geologic podcast, I talked about Walking on the Moon and uh, Stuart's amazing drum part for that a couple episodes ago. But he wrote a song called Miss Redenko, and it's just a fun little silly tune and I just love it. I didn't know at the time that Stuart wrote it, but Stuart wrote this thing. Don't tell the director I said so, but are you safe from Mr. Danko? We were at a policy meeting, they were 
for planning new ways of cheating. Didn't mean to rock your boat, but you sent this dangerous note. You've been letting your feelings show. Are you safe, Miss Gridenko? Miss Gridenko, are you safe? Are you safe, Miss Gridenko? Miss Gridenko, are you safe? Is anybody alive in here? Is anybody alive in here? Is anybody at all in here? alive in it. You've been letting your feelings show. Are you safe, Miss Gridenko? Miss Gridenko, are you safe? Is anybody alive in here? Is anybody alive in here? Is anybody alive in here? Nobody but us in here. Nobody but us. Is anybody alive in here? Is anybody alive in here? Is anybody at all in here? Nobody but us in here. Nobody but us. Like uh, in the best way, like a little dessert of a song, and what happens at the end is a really cool thing. So, so we're we're, we're zipping along, sort of in A minor, right? We're in a minor key, saddest of all keys, A minor. Actually, D minor is the saddest of all keys, but A minor. And what happens at the very last chord? It's a major. Nobody but us in here. We're playing on minor for a while, and then we end the song with a major. And for all of you music nerds out there, that's called a, type it quickly, that's right, a Picardy third after the Starship Captain. That's right. No, it's, a, it's called a Picardy third. When you have a minor song that ends with a major chord, that's called a Picardy third, which is, which is somewhat related to a Mozartian cloud. A Mozartian cloud is where you have a major melody and you make it minor. That's a Mozartian cloud, like uh, what happens in uh, in uh, Close to the Edge. The melody has a Mozartian cloud. <gasps> Dig it, right? Just some of the tidbits you'll be getting throughout 13 songs. So um, that album, uh, Synchronicity album, is just a monster album. It's an amazing record. Uh, maybe it's overproduced for, for people that like the early police stuff, but I think it's a, it's a culmination of all their efforts. Okay, song number four. Where are we here? This next artist was way more influential on me than I realized, and then it kind of hit me one day, maybe about ten years ago. Um, and the the artist is Thomas Dolby. Now everybody knows Thomas Dolby. She blinded me with science. Everybody knows that. Maybe you know. Uh, one or two other songs, like Hyperactive, which was a great, great song, a great video, one of the few trombone solos you could possibly hear on MTV. <laughs> oh God, what a great video, what a silly, crazy video, as well as uh, Blinding With Science. But he put out, in 1988, he put out an album called Aliens Ate My Buick. And this record is, I think, the greatest lost 80s album. It's like the greatest secret Lost Prince record. It's so good. It's so funky and awesome and fun. Uh, the song Airhead was on that record that, that had a, an MTV video that went with it, which was good. Uh, George Clinton from Parliament Funkadelic was one of the co-producers on that record, and you can totally hear it. There's a song called Hot Sauce, which is as funky as an English bald white guy can possibly get. It's really great. Uh, the opening track is this like big band metal tune called Keys to Her Ferrari. So I was of course in high school uh, uh, monstrously interested and in love with this one person and wanted her to listen to this record because it was so important to me and so I lent her my cassette and she, she listened to it in the car with her mom and the first track of course is Keys to, Keys to Her Ferrari, the bridge of which basically has the protagonist of the song, uh, let's say romantically finishing in, in the car by himself, which I, I was like, well, I didn't think you'd play it in front of your mom, but that was kind of how that relationship went. That's kind of that was the that was pretty much yeah. Um, but if you're if you're not familiar with that record, it's 
monstrously great. It's just monstrously great. The musicianship on it is great. The grooves are great. It's killer. One of the songs on there is this one, which I think is just so pretty and a little bit sad. And it's called My Brain is Like a Sieve, which is the first time I ever heard that word, sieve. So Thomas Dolby, My Brain is Like a Sieve. My brain is like a sieve Sometimes it's easier to forget All the bad things you did to me You did to me My brain is like a sieve But it knows when it's being messed with Yeah, if you want it, you could come in So come in When you said you loved me, when you told me you cared, you'd be a part of me, you'd always be there, but you really mean to hurt me, no, I think you only meant to tease, it's hard to remember. I've lost my memories Sieve, my brain is like a sieve Sometimes it's easier to forget All the bad things you did to me You did to me Yeah, yeah, yeah My brain is like a sieve But it knows when it's being messed with Yeah, if you want it You could come in so come in You ought to be ashamed of your behavior When you're treating me this way As if I had deserved to be a place to vent your ire Someday I'm gonna douse that bonfire We make a crucial team for a dying world and style is a word that seldom ever heard in your vocabulary. The victim of a murder, Mr. Ray. Murder! My brain is like a sieve. Sometimes it's easier to forget all the bad things you did to me. You did to me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My brain is like a sieve. Where we both could live Yeah, if you want it You could come in So come in My brain is like a sieve Sometimes it's easier to forget All the bad things you did to me My brain is like a sieve but it's a place where we both could live Yeah, if you want it, you could come in So come in Isn't that nice? That's a pretty song. What you got, Dee? Uh, it's one of John Buck's daughter's birthdays today. I have it in my notes. So, it is Natalie's birthday. Natalie Buck, happy birthday, Natalie. Thanks for hanging out with us, if you are hanging out with us. Uh, at the last uh, the, the Thursday thing two weeks ago, it was Kalina's birthday. So now it's her sister's birthday, just to be fair. Just to be fair, because, <laughs> you know, I want to be equal. So, hi. Thanks for tuning in. All of these songs are very old. They're kind of like, kind of like Bach. <laughs> just with larger shoulders. So, yeah. Okay, moving on to song number five, Cinco. Right? Is that where we are? Yeah. From 1982. And not uh, two thirds English and one third uh, American trio, but a full blooded three thirds Canadian trio, uh, a little ensemble, one of my absolute favorites. Uh, this is from the Signals album, and this is called uh, this is called the Analog Kid. 
This is the sister song to another song on that record called Digital Man. You had Digital Man and you had Analog Kid. And they both talked about things sort of related but different. And it's kind of neat in that Neil Pierceian way that he could wind lyrics around and stuff. So this is kind of about being, uh, being outside and, and being inspired by the stuff that we're not allowed to see anymore, like trees. Uh, so yeah, that's what this is. kind of, but in that last section they're doing that minor stuff and they go to the major. Neat! Uh, that song uh, on that album on Signals, Signals also had uh, 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 Subdivisions was on that, which is a favorite of mine, which is a lyrically a wonderful song. All those tunes are lyrically amazing. But uh, instead of doing like Moving Pictures Part 2, the album that had Tom Sawyer on it, the album that had uh, um, Red Barchetta, 
and YYZ and all that. Instead of doing like another version of that, they kind of went more keyboardy, which some, some people hated, but I think a lot of people appreciated it also. And that also got them some MTV play, which is unbelievable. The video for subdivisions, you could actually see that on MTV back in the, back in the day, back in the early 80s. Um, and uh, Getty just had more and more keyboards happening, and I think it brought them into, uh, into the 80s in kind of a cool way. Some ska influences. They were listening to the police, they were listening to Talking Heads, they loved all those albums, and you started getting this sort of ska and new wave-ish thing happening with them. So, very, very cool. Okay, uh, before we go to the next tune, uh, you might notice on the side of your screen there, we've got uh, uh, my, my PayPal and my Venmo. If you're enjoying the show, uh, or you want to just hate pay me, that's fine too, uh, send a dollar or two uh, into either one of those things. That makes such a huge difference. Everybody's aware of what's going on for the uh, service industry, especially with musicians and people in bars and all kinds of stuff like that and restaurants. We're all doing our best. So throw a buck or two over there. I really appreciate it into the virtual tip chart. People were so generous last time. But uh, uh, if you like what this is, it allows things like this to exist, which is really exciting. I want to do this all the time. I want to bring different themes every, every week or every two weeks, however, however often we'll end up doing this thing. Um, so if you can, zip over to PayPal, it's super easy, zip over to Venmo, throw a dollar or two in there, even 50 cents, whatever you have you can spare, makes all the difference in the world to a little individual like me trying to figure out what he's going to do. So uh, uh, it's all cool. It's all cool. Thank you. Cheers again. If you've given in the past, I appreciate it so much. One of my favorite live bands that I've never seen live, if you can imagine the, the weirdness of that, is Level 42. I sit and watch live videos of Level 42 almost to an obscene amount. Almost to an obscene amount? I watch a lot. Are we on song six? One, two, three, four, five. Yes, song number six. Um, Level 42 is such a great live band. It's just it's Mark King and, 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 and Mark Lindup, I think is the other guy's name. Um, Phenomenal musicians. They get great musicians to work with them. The songs are really interesting and catchy and jazzy and fusiony and hooky and wonderful. And go on YouTube and watch some Level 42 shows from 2008, 2012. They had a big tour. They had their 30th anniversary, which was a while ago as well. Um, an album from uh, from 1987 was called Running in the Family, and this is the titular song. I like saying titular. This is the titular song from running in the family. <laughs>
things they are They think back it's so bizarre Like a dream within a dream Or the somewhere in between Like a drummer plays his drum Like a father, like a son You're gonna have to face the music So bizarre, it runs in the family. All the things we are on the backseat of the car, Joseph and Emily. We only see so far, and we all have our dead insides. Take me back into your arms, it's no longer a mystery. There's no cause for alarm. Never have come this far with no sense of history. It always leaves a scar We all have our daddy's eyes Looking back it's so bizarre Running in the family We all have our daddy's eyes Looking back it's so bizarre It's such a story song they're really good at story songs, that band. It's sort of this, you have this real sense of these characters. You've got the kid and the, the thing with his brother Joe and Emily, and they're in trouble, and the dad is realizing, like, these kids are in trouble. I was in trouble when I was a kid. It's a very, it's a sort of a pathos thing. It's really, really cool, really, really well done. And what I love about that particular song is in the ride chorus that's going out, all the... <laughs> in the family they change the words at the end so it goes to this whole never could have never come this far with no sense of history it always leaves a scar it still rhymes with bizarre it's just a really well written song it's really really well written and really wonderful so mark king is a monster just not a monster bass player only but a singer and what i love is his range too his vocal range it suits me really well because it's very low for a pop pop singer for uh, someone that's doing pop tunes usually they tend to be of a higher range, and this is kind of mid-range, I don't want to say baritone, but somewhere around there. It's kind of cool. It's kind of cool. All right, moving on to the next tune, which is, we're going to go obscure for this next one, but it's one of my absolute favorites. Another Lost album, sort of from the 80s, a Lost band that it was okay they were lost because they were so famous in other places, it didn't matter. But the next band is a band called Animal Logic. Animal Logic was comprised, another trio basically, of Stuart Copeland, who we mentioned before, my favorite drummer, one of my favorite drummers, Stanley Clark, the jazz fusion bassist, the monster jazz fusion bassist, and a woman named Deborah Holland. Now, Stanley Clark and Stuart Copeland were chatting one day before they formed the band, and they sort of were, I don't know if they were making fun of pop music or were commenting on what's being, what was being played on the radio and on the TV at the time. And I think one of them sort of almost dared the other to like, okay, if pop music is so simple to make, let's make a pop record. Let's do it. Let's, we'll produce it. We'll find a songwriter and we'll do it. They got a whole bunch of people to send them demos. And they found Deborah Holland from Texas, this woman. She was a school teacher, like a school teacher and a piano teacher. She sent a bunch of demos in. They loved it. And they, they grabbed her. And I think, I think if that band had existed maybe four or five years later, I think they would have been just just monstrously huge because it was kind of before uh, Alanis Morissette it was kind of before the individual woman uh, who could lead a band kind of thing and there's, there's examples of that I know but in terms of popular and she she wrote such great songs and then the guys Stuart and Stanley they just played the crap out of them and produced it really well uh, Steve Howe from Yes played guitar on the first record a couple places I think Andy Summers played a couple things as well but they had a great touring band you can go on YouTube and you can see them on Letterman they do a couple tunes on Letterman, which is great. And uh, there's a rumor that they're gonna, they're gonna do another album. It's 35 years later. They all got together in Stuart Copeland's house a couple months ago, or about a year or so ago, and sort of had a jam session. And Deborah Holland still writes songs, and she's kind of become more of a country artist. But uh, I just love her. I love her tunes. And she was, like Stuart said, she was a real woman writing about real things. She wasn't bubblegum. She wasn't Tiffany. She was not the. I mean, Tiffany's great. Don't get me wrong. 
but uh, this was a this was a, a real a real woman who wasn't a pop star writing stuff. And so, the first song on the first Animal Logic album from '88 or uh, '89, sorry, was this. And what was strange was there was two songs in MTV rotation that had basically the same title. This is "There's a Spy in the House of Love" is the name of this song, which is an Anais Nin. Nin? How do you say that? Nin? Anais Nin? Anais Nin. Anais Nin book. And Deborah used it, and the band Was Not Was. Remember them? Open the door, get on the floor, everybody rock the dinosaur. <laughs> that was the Was Not Was album called What Up Dog. And on that album, the first single off that record was Spy in the House of Love. So that was a year before. So in 88, there was the Was Not Was version, or, or song with this title. And then a year later was the Animal Logic with the same title, totally different songs, totally different songs. And I think there's even a third and a fourth song that has used that same title as well. So from Animal Logic, which was the name of the album as well as the band, this is There's a Spy in the House of Love. And I changed the pronouns in this. I hope that's okay. I've changed the pronouns. I don't want to offend anybody, but I've changed the pronouns because I just feel more comfortable with the different pronouns. There's a spy in the house of love. She knows what I'm thinking of. She's making friends, places high above. In the house of love, in the house of love. I had dreams, but they've been laid to waste. I lost the time, and I lost the taste. I need her now to meet me face to face. In the house of love, in the house of love. Someday I'll find out who she is, and when I do, she'll probably go. And the message can only be this, whatever it says I need to know. There's a spy, she's in every room, has no name, only a nom de plume. It's hard to rise above the sense of doom In the house of love, in the house of love Someday I'll find out who it is And when I do, she'll probably go But the message can only be this Whatever it says, I need to know There's a spy She's still by my side. Wait in the house of love until I'm sure what I'm thinking of. And when I do, some angel up above will come on home to the house of love. Someday I'll find out who it is. And when I do, she'll probably go. But the message can only be. Says I need to know. There's a spy. There's a spy. There's a spy. There's a spy. Fun tune. What's neat about that song? It's basically a blues tune. Now, for those of you that listen to my podcast, you know what I think about blues. <laughs> but uh, this is interesting because it's, it's, it's basically a one-four-five song. I mean, the first chord, first chord in the thing, E, and it goes to A, the fourth, and back to the one chord, and then to five. It's basically a blues in the verses, anyway. So it's like you know, I've been down so long, being down don't bother me. Been down so long, being down don't bother me. I'm gonna take all my troubles, drown them in the deep blue sea. Right? Blues, but she's doing this cool. There's a spy in the house of love. Da, da, da. Be, de, 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 be, de, 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 so it's not an AAB form, but she's using those chords, which is really kind of neat, and it rescues the, or it removes the uh, bluesy tang, taste, taint. The bluesy taint. Ooh. Oh, God. <laughs>
god. Uh, if you like what you're hearing, please throw a few bucks this way. Also, subscribe to this YouTube channel, because uh, why not? So I guess you're supposed to smash the button? Is that is that the deal? You're supposed to smash the YouTube channel? I will send you no money for Bluesy Tanked. Mm. I will get zero funds for Bluesy Tanked. Yes, there's a, there's a band name for you. Mm. The smell of authenticity. Bluesy Tanked. And the Tainty Blues. Um... Also, if you are enjoying this uh, and you happen to want to know what my music sounds like, I have this lovely thing, because it's an 80s show. Uh, this is my mixtape, which is not a mixtape. It's actually a thumb drive that has uh, over three hours plus of music on here. Uh, all of my greatest hits, as well as a, a complete 11-minute, uh, uh, 12-minute musical based on the life of James Randi, James the Amazing Randi. It's all on here. Uh, it's 44 songs, so it's, I think it's almost four hours worth of stuff. If you would like one of these sent to your home, which is really fun to put onto your thing. Again, it's, it's a, it, it just looks like a cassette, but it's actually a thumb drive. Put $31 into my PayPal, and I will send it to you. Or $31 into Venmo. It's a unique enough uh, price that I will know. That means you want one of these. For $31, you can get the... Ooh, upside down. For $31, uh, put $31 into PayPal or Venmo, and I will send you one. It's got all my greatest hits, a bunch of unreleased stuff as well. And if you order one, you get a free DVD, 21812. 21812 DVD, which was filmed, which features uh, my mom, features uh, Phil Plate. I will include this for free, okay? So do that if you like. Otherwise, just throw a few shekels in that direction. And uh, yeah, are we on? What's on? We on? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, here's song number eight. We doing good? Everybody happy out there? We're having uh, having your drinkies? Having your masks? You're all good? You're safe? You have like 160 people. Fabulous. Yay. All right. The next tune is from 1980 from an album called Argy Bargy. That's right. The album's name is Argy Bargy. You know what it is? Can you guess? Put it in the comments now. What song from Argy Bargy? Am I gonna play right now? Which is which is semi obscure, but not that obscure. This was a this was a hit in England, but not so much in the U.S. And uh, uh, this band has a great piano player at the time when this thing was released called Jules Holland. Does that help at all? Yes, Jules Holland, who has a wonderful show now that he features on. Here what it's called tonight with Jules Holland, I think, amazing piano player. Um, be sure to check him out because it's great. Yes, Squeeze. Ryan Gregory got there. Ryan Gregory got there. What song? Brian? No, he just said the band. He just said the band, all right. The song is Pulling Muscles from a Show, which I love this tune on. Do it down in Kevin Sands, they do it in Waikiki. Lazing by the beach all day, the crickets creep. Squinting faces at the sky, a Harold Robbins paperback. Surfers drop their boards and dry And everybody wears a hat But behind the chalet My holiday's complete When I feel like William Tell Make Mary on on to Pulling muscles from a shell Pulling muscles from a shell
Just sort of start doing that. And just it's like you do, I know you're all doing this at home, right? You're all sitting by your computer on your couch, whatever it was, and the cat's kind of looking at you, going like, "What's going on?" But that's what you have to do when that song happens. There's just something about it. Oh my God! And that song has this lovely A flat diminished chord. Any pop tune that has an A flat diminished chord is okay in my books. If you are just tuning in, this is episode one of 13 Songs with George Rob. We are on song. Number nine, moving right along, moving right along. We're having a fun time here. This is uh, this next tune is actually the most popular uh, song that I have, but I had to include it because it's sort of it's one of it's it's such an interesting song, and the artist is Prince, and this is from the album Sign of the Times. Now this was actually a, a, a top ten hit, but I wanted to include it because Prince, after after he played it during that tour when they made that movie Sign of the Times, which is phenomenal. If you haven't seen the movie Sign of the Times, the concert film Sign of the Times, it gets a little labored in terms of there's like a dramatic story that's happening. But if you can ignore that and just watch Sheila E. play drums in a white skin tight bodysuit with like four inch high heels, which I know, I mean, I mean she could be wearing a, a potato sack and it would be, I would have the same expression because she is such a phenomenal musician. And I'm not that I'm surprised, it's just like she's so stupidly good. And, and then just is dancing and singing and rapping and oh my gosh. To a little 13 year old Yuki watching that, that was hard to calculate. And I didn't <laughs> understand what this, this mixture, this cocktail of feelings, literally a cocktail, if you know what I'm saying, of feelings that were happening when I'm watching Sheila E play, play in that concert thing, just crazy. So that record, uh, Sign of the Times, um, what was interesting about it is it was all demos. There's like there's two live tracks, but the rest is all demos. What does that mean? Well, when a band or an, or an artist decides to record a record, the way it usually is done or used to be done, not so much anymore, but but the way it used to be done was you would make a demo. And a demo is kind of like a rough version of the song. So you would maybe have drums and guitar and bass and just a very simple kind of melodic line. And that would be the first track you would put down. And so you'd have like a multi-track recording, right? And you would just have that track. And then you would add, build onto that, and add onto it, add onto it, add onto it, and then eventually remove that track, and you have the song. And that's kind of how demos work. There's different versions of that. You can do different things. But Prince made these demos on his own, using a drum machine, and he played bass, and he played guitar, and keys, and all this kind of stuff, and sang. And when it came time to record the record, he just decided, no, I'm just going to keep the demos, because the demos are great, because I'm Prince. Which he's allowed, because he's Prince. So the song I wanted to do was the, another titular song, Sign of the Times. Now this, like I said, was a number three hit, so it kind of isn't quite obscure, but it's a very dark song. It's a very dark song for Prince. Most of his stuff tends to be a little bit more positive, uh, especially songs that he would write on Sundays. Songs that Prince would write on Sundays happen to be more positive and kind of uplifting. This is the rare case of a song that Prince wrote on a Sunday that was pretty dark. And it deals with gangs and crack addiction and government spending. And it's just dark, and, but funky as all get out. And that's why I wanted to include it. And he, doesn't, he didn't play it very often live because it was sort of so dark. But this is Sign of the Times. <laughs> A 
chance his girlfriend came across a needle and soon she did the same. At home there are 17 year old boys and their idea of fun was being in a game called the Disciples High on Crack, toting a machine gun. church and killed everyone inside. You turn on the telly and every other story is telling you somebody died. My sister killed the baby because she couldn't afford to feed it and was sending people to the moon. Last September my cousin tried reefer for the very first time. Now he's doing a horse. It's June. version there's this drum break that happens and Sheila leads a parade of drummers down the big balustrade with the staircase and it's just oh, no, 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 no. okay we are at song number 10 look at that yeah D Manja's whole family is watching yay shout out to my sister Melissa hey Melissa yay okay this next song I want to talk about a little bit in detail because some of what's going on here is really interesting and fun, especially for a pop tune. Now, the band is Genesis. Uh, the album uh, is Duke from 1980. And this is one of the rare sort of pop rock tunes that you would hear on the radio and still hear on the radio that is in 13. What? Yeah. Before we get to that, though, I want to talk about what's happening harmonically in this song. Now, for the most part, the song is Turn It On Again. And for the most part, this is the harmonic sort of center of what's going on. It's a concert B. Right? So we're just... This is what's plugging away. Now, Genesis was really great at having these kind of uh, 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 tones that they could play against. So if you have a, an established harmony like this, which... That's your sort of B chord, right? I'm going B minor. It's kind of fun. But then you can start getting really weird, like... And what, what's happening is your ear is so used to this sort of tonal center, that any weirdness that happens on top of it, you can allow, because it's sort of, it's, 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 it's lying on this bed of B, right? can happen and that's sort of the center of this thing until they get to the B section of the song ironically the B section of the song and they go up to C a half step so it goes from B which is a very boring motion and 
then back down to B. What's happening chord-wise is you have a D chord with a C in the bass. There's the D chord, right? That's your D chord, but there's a C in the bass. Sounds so cool, right? And the, and the melody... sharp is in there, right? So weird, so funky. So instead of just going, I can show you, I can show you, which would sound kind of boring. I can show you, I can show you. So listen for that as that happens. The other thing is that the main riff and the main verse is in 13. So that's this. say it's in 6 and 7, but 13 is cooler. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. Crazy, right? And the third crazy thing, well, there's lots of crazy things about this song, but the third crazy thing is that the chorus to this song doesn't happen until the end. And it only happens once, and then they're done. There's like this verse, and then like these weird bridge B sections where it goes up to the C from the B, and then it kind of goes another verse, and then the chorus doesn't happen until like four minutes into the song, and it only happens at the right out, and then they're done. Craziness, right? All right, let's do it. One more sip of my Bond villain juice. Now the real challenge in this is playing this lick and singing the... the, the the thing is, Phil Collins is so great at finding interesting melodies to go against what's happening rhythmically and harmonically, um, or all the guys are in that band. Uh, and this is a particular example of, you listen melodically versus what the guitar riff is doing, and it's pretty cool, uh, just to bear to play. So here we go. Turn it on again from 1980 from the Duke album by a little trio at the time called Genesis. <laughs>
Funky, yeah. right? Weird, funky, kind of cool, awesome. D. Randy from Beatnik Turtles in the in the room. Randy from Beatnik Turtles. Oh my goodness gracious! So Randy from Beatnik Turtles made me write when I was your age. For all of you out there that liked the song when I was your age, it's because of Randy. He gave me a 24-hour challenge. I had to write a song in a day for his album way back in 1971. Hey, Randy. Good to see you, brother. If you are just joining, we are on song 11. Oh, i got to go back to the thing here. We are at song 11 of 13 songs. And... Um, <clears throat> This is a Talking head song, and uh, I had a tough time picking one, because uh, some of them are obscure, some of them are not so obscure, uh, but this one, this one is from 1988, uh, off an album called Naked, which I think, I think is one of the, I'm biased, obviously, but I think it's one of the best records from the 80s. It's so wonderful, and, and, and tragic, and deep, and sounds amazing to this day it does not sound dated at all there's no 80s synths on it there's no 80s drum sounds on it there's no 80s anything on it it's all real instruments it's a lot of guitar uh, a lot of percussion chris france the drummer uses brushes almost on every song there's every every song except for one has brushes on the drums the song ruby deer has sticks otherwise it's all brushes uh the, the most popular song from that record was Nothing But Flowers, which, you know, here we stand, like an animal, which is, which is saying that, you know, oh, we have paradise and it kind of sucks, which is a great, great tune. Uh, the song Blind is a great song as well. The first half of that record was kind of up and positive, and then as you flipped the cassette, which was a yellow cassette, that was the first clear cassette that I bought at the time. It was cool because it was clear. Not only was it clear, but it was yellow. It had this amber color to it. I remember driving, being on a, on a bus from Washington, D.C. back up to Montclair in 1988, listening to this thing. We had our, our, our yearly school trip to, uh, to, to, to D.C. The seniors would go to D.C. and I was listening to this thing. And uh, the second half of the record just takes this dive. It just gets dark and dark and dark and ends with a song called Cool Water. I will for sure have an episode of Talking Heads and David Byrne songs. For sure. No question. Um, that will be coming up eventually. Excuse me, but I wanted to do this because uh, it's a great tune. It's one of the darker tunes, and it is so blindingly appropriate now, 30, whatever it is, five years later, 30, 30 plus years later, 32 years later, it's still stupidly relevant. This is called Democratic Circus. It's from the album Naked by perhaps my favorite band, Talking Heads. Said it's 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 sad how relevant this song still is. Found out this morning there's a circus coming to town. They drive in Cadillacs using walkie-talkies and the Secret Service. Their big top imitation of life. Oh, Flags and microphones. We have to cover our eyes. We play the side shows and we light the tunnel of love. When we ride the Ferris wheel, we're little children again. When they're asking for volunteers, I'll be the first one aboard. Calls on names will be the first ones to go to sleep. Stealing all our dreams, dreams for sale. We sell them back to you. On with the show. Going down and the dog 
wolves are starting to howl. We stay out after dark, eating cotton candy and the music's playing. How we all laughed. We split our sides. The camera flashed. We almost died. So I'm glad my cousin's watching, Roman. Mm -hmm. Roman, who did the artwork, the cover for Minutia, my second album. Uh, he gave me a cassette that on one side had Speaking in Tongues, and I think more songs about buildings and, fo and food, and on the other side it had uh, Fear, the album, the band Fear. Beef bologna. Beef bologna. Beef, 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 beef bologna. She don't want pastrami, she don't want salami, she don't want no chicken, she don't want no roast. All she wants is a double dose of my beef, 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 beef bologna. 12-year-old me going, you're allowed to do that? That kind of, uh, yeah, that sort of set me up. So thank you. Thanks, Munch, for, <laughs> for giving me that tape, which is in a box somewhere. It's probably in this jacket's pocket, actually. So yeah. Donna, what's up? Leonard's here. Oh, Leonard! Shouldn't you be looking through a telescope somewhere, Leonard? Awesome. Okay. Uh, once again... Thank you for tuning in. We've got two, tongue, two tunes left. My God, it's flying by so quick. Um, if you'd like to drop a couple uh, shekels there in the PayPal or the Venmo, I would really appreciate it. It makes, it makes life uh, possible, at least for the next, I don't know, 60 days until the sun comes back, as it were. Um, here's an, oh, and don't forget, if you would like, you can, you can purchase my uh, mixtape, which is... Uh, which is uh, not a mixtape, but it's actually a hard drive with uh, almost four hours worth of music. My best of uh, unreleased things, all kinds of fun stuff. Put $31, $31 into my PayPal or Venmo, and I will ship it to you. And you will get included this free 21812 DVD, which has like six hours of crap on here. I don't even know what's on here. Uh, the best part of this is Mortimer talking about the show, which is literally the commentary track is Mortimer talking about the show. So that's, if nothing else is worth it, that's worth it. It's actually worth it for my mom and for, for Phil Plate and for the band and for uh, and Alyssa B. Alyssa B is on here. She's the, the wonderful, the late Alyssa B. She's on here. So, two tunes left. Um, this is, a, this is a, a song by a band called XTC, which I also love. XTC, there's a documentary called This Is Pop, which was on Showtime, which is about the band XTC, and you should watch it. That's all I'm going to say. You should watch it because it's so good. XTC is the primo example of a band who got better and better and better and better. Maybe maybe only like the Beatles are a similar, similar example, but the Beatles were kind of hot out of the gate. XTC, as you follow their career, their songwriting and their production, it's just a perfect... Uh, Alder curve, what's that called? That thing that you know everything doubles, whatever it's called. You know where all the people die. That that line that we're dealing with, it's one of those. But like, but for music. Um, this is off an album called Oranges and Lemons, and the album after that was Non Such, which was just those two records are crazy good. And then you get into the Apple Venus records, which are just stupidly beautiful and amazing, and they're great. And this is another somewhat negative uh, song, but I just love it because it has these. F major 7 flat 5 chords and a B flat major 7 flat 5 which is like insane for a pop tune to have that and what's neat with this song is the bridge of the song starts the song it's one of the rare examples where the bridge the thing that happens after like the second chorus actually starts the tune to set up the mood 
This is called Across This Ant Heap. Soldiers, workers, slaves, and farmers, nurses, queens, and drones, wish they'd leave my head tonight. Let me rest my bones. XTC, across this ant heap, if you're unfamiliar. Uh, Mayor of Simpleton is on that album, which was, their, I think, one of their biggest hits. Check it out, because it's a wonderful record. And here we go. I can't believe we're at the end. Song 13 of 13 Songs with George Robb. Thank you so much for tuning in to episode one. I so appreciate it. Um, like I said, throw a couple things here. Don't forget, also, my good friend C.J. Steinway... Uh, Chuck Donches, same person, he's doing a uh, 11 o'clock show on his Facebook page. Go over to CJ Steinway. He's doing a chill kind of uh, instrumental keyboard, like vibe, chill kind of just piano uh, thing. It's going to be beautiful. And just put it on, put the lights low, cuddle up to next to someone you love or someone you love to love. 
uh, and just hang out with CJ as he plays some beautiful songs, some jazz tunes, a real piano player. Be sure to check him out. Uh, also, like I said, happy birthday to Natalie. Thank you for watching. Uh, and um, to those of you that know Mr. Schatz, uh, our, our, we, we love you. We love you so much. Song 13 is by a band called Anderson Bruford Wakeman Howe. And no, that's not a bunch of attorneys, which it sounds like, but it's four-fifths of classic yes. Uh, it's almost too, too long of a story to get into, but you had the band Yes kind of split into two factions in the 80s, which, <clears throat> which happened again in the, in the 2018s, 14s, 15s, whatever. Uh, but you had John Anderson on vocals, Steve Howe on guitar, Rick Wakeman on keys and Bill Bruford on drums, and they had Tony Levin on bass, and they recorded an album called Anderson Bruford Wakeman Howe, which I, at the time, that was actually my first classic Yes record. I knew 90125, which I loved. I knew Big Generator, which I loved, and I still love to this day. And for anyone that says that those records are somehow simpler or dumber than the classic Yes, here is my challenge to you. Sing the opening line of Leave It. Sing that line. That's all I'm saying. Take the song, leave it. You know, I can feel no sense of measure. I've been listening to that for 40 years, and I don't know what's going on in that opening thing. I did, an, I did, a, I did a version of that, a cover version of that, and literally that first line took me like a month to get right. And it's not right. It's not even close to right. So, side note. Ms. Info. This just in. Yes. Uh, C.J. Steinway's show will yes. be rescheduled for tomorrow at 10 p.m. Oh, okay. oh C.J. Steinway's show is rescheduled for tomorrow at 10. Okay, good to know. Thanks for letting us know. You know what? Before we go, actually, Ms. Info, get in here. Show us your 80s fabulousness. Oh. Show us your 80s. Check this out. Check this out, folks. Here she is. Yeah. Sorry to socially, not socially. Yeah, we're, 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 yeah. So, yeah, there she is. We good? Can you see? Can you get the boots? Can you show the boots? I don't know if you can do the boots. <laughs> The hair is the essential thing. There we go. There you go. A lot of what I'm wearing, I actually wore in the 80s. That's it. This is, was vintage when you really could buy vintage. Right, right. Yeah. And my hair, just from uh, quarantine, yes. is approaching what I wore in the 80s. So. <laughs> yes, yes, quarantine peacock. I love it. Thanks. Ms. Info, everybody. So Anderson Rupert Wakeman Howe had this album called Anderson Rupert Wakeman Howe that had great great tunes on it. It sounds a bit dated because of Bill Bruford's drums, which I hate to say that like that just that just drives a, a knitting needle through my through my spleen that I have to say that. But I listened to it recently and it's it's great. The songwriting is great. It's very yesy, it's very cool, but the, the, the drums do sound a little bit a little bit they date it a little bit. I would love to re-record that album with just acoustic instruments just to see what that would be like. But the very last song on that record is this song. And I thought it was a nice way to end today and to sort of give us uh, a message for what's happening now in the world. This is called Let's Pretend. It's a very lovely song. Let us be together, let's pretend that we are free. Let's all be where the angels find us, we all have the key. Shall we seal the truth in life? Shall we light the heavens? We're so good at finding pleasure as to what we are and how we fit together. Let us sing the song it is, let the sound of all belief Let's all find a space in life to follow in between. It's something that I feel pour upon my soul, a countenance of love for one and all. To know there's so many ways the force of nature prevails. I lay down, I lay down, and I pray. Let's get our hearts together like before, and as before, we'll do again. To know there's so many ways the force of nature prevails. I lay down, I lay down, and I pray.
Let's get our hearts together like before And as before we'll do again Let's get our hearts together as before And like before we'll do again Let's get our hearts together as before And like before we'll do again Let's get our hearts together like before And as before we'll do again That's episode one of 13 Songs with George Traub. Please watch my Facebook and my Twitter. I'll let you know when the next show is going to be, and the next show's topic, or the subject of the next show, will be Sting and the Police. Tune in for that one. It's going to be fun. Thanks, everybody. I so appreciate it. Do this if you can. Order one of these if you can. And if you can't, just like the page and subscribe. Be safe. Be good to each other. Keep an eye out for everybody. And I love you all. Thanks, guys. Be safe. See you next time.